Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Fresh Fire Friday. Welcome to Fresh Fire Friday. I'm so glad that you made it all the way to Friday. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and let me let me do this. Let me go ahead and um, get my video loaded so I can like and share and share and like. Come on, it's Fresh Fire. Friday. Amen. 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 Fresh Fryer Friday. Come on. Like and share the video. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kawana. Good morning, Tonja. Good morning, Taylor. Good morning, Miriam. Good morning to everybody. Thank y'all for joining us this morning. Uh, it is great to see you. It's great to be a part of your Friday morning. Y'all know I usually wait uh, just about a few minutes before I get started. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give y'all a few minutes to get in, to wake up, and to get going. Hey, Amen. I got my tea. I don't know what you got. But I got my tea, and my tea is good. Hey, amen, hey, amen, hey, amen. All right, all right, all right. Y'all come on in, like, and share the video. Somebody might need to hear this word this morning, and uh, we thank God for you. We praise the Lord for you, and thank God uh, for waking us up to see another Friday. It is a great day. It is a great day. Uh, if, if all of the news reports are correct, the heat is about to get up out of here. Praise God. I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I know some of y'all ready for some cool days and all that, but I'm ready for some like 20 and 30 degree days. Uh, I, I love me some cold days. Hey, Amen. All right. It's time to get started. Praise God. Uh, don't, don't forget, uh, we are still... Uh, sewing into the life of baby star amen so let's 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 still remember uh star strong amen let's remember her and her family she's doing well she's recovering well praise god but they still have a long road they'll be in cincinnati until february at the earliest so uh let's continue to uh pray for them let's continue to sow into their lives and let's continue uh to lift them up all right all right all right all right all right i'm ready y'all ready i'm ready let's go to proverbs chapter number three in verse number five, we're going to start there this morning. Proverbs chapter number three and verse number five. Listen, uh, I was sitting here this morning and uh, I was sitting here at the table uh, while I was waiting. And, uh, and and this thing, this thing came to me. Um, listen, um, th these are some things that just dropped in my spirit. Um, th there, you will never have a breakout without you breaking through. Okay, let me let me help you out with that. You're never gonna have a breakout without you breaking through. Uh, you you could you could be uh, in enclosed in some walls that are not very strong, but if you just sit there, you're never going to break out. But if you get up, and sometimes you have to push against things that that, and you have to you have to you you have to be forceful with some things that that seem like they have you uh, closed in. They really don't have you closed in. You will never have breakout. I mean, a breakthrough unless you decide that you're going to break through some stuff. So so there are some things that may be encircling you in your life that look like they, they, they have you hemmed in, but they really don't have you hemmed in. You just need to get up and do something. You need to get up and do something. Uh, and here was the other thing. Here was the other thing. There will never be change if you don't change. Uh, there'll never be change if you don't change. Did, did y'all hear me? There will never be change if you don't change. Uh, most people like, like say for instance, if you want, if you want your marriage to get better, but you're waiting on the other person to change, your marriage is never going to get better. If you are not willing to change also, come on, that, that was just some, that was, that was just some bonus tea right there. Let's get into the tea. Uh, Proverbs three and five, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. If you're not trusting why are you why are you expecting God to be directing? Okay, let me say that again. If you're not trusting, God's not directing. Why why am I gonna direct somebody who does not trust? You you I hope you understand that. And I hope you you you're around Sunday when I I have because we we're gonna be back in this Sunday. I have another example to use in this. If you're not trusting, God's not directing. If you if you can't. If you can't trust God, see it ain't it ain't a matter, and and I and I want us to believe, and I want us to get this down into our spirit. It's not a matter of you believing God. You you believe all of the stuff. That if you're a believer, you you will believe that God can do the impossible. You believe that, but you just don't trust Him to do it for you. Let let me sip some tea. Let me sip some tea. 
We believe a whole lot of things about God. It's, it's just a matter of, I just don't trust him. I, I don't, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. And this word mean, this, think about this word lean, what it means to lean on somebody, what it means to, to lean into them. It means to put all of your weight into them, to lean into them, to trust them. Like how much do you, how much weight do you put on God's word? How, how much do you trust God's word? And, and stop running around. This, this is the thing that, that has always got me. If I can explain it, it ain't faith. Did y'all get that? If I can explain it, it ain't faith. So, so a whole lot of folk want to be able to explain everything before they step or before they lean or before they trust or before they put all their weight on it. They want to be able to explain it and to be able to, to, to look at this thing. Listen. We want, we want every single thing to be in place before we decide that we're going to, to trust it. We want every single thing to be in place. But listen, any of y'all ever been to a fair? Any of y'all ever been to an amusement park or anything like that? You get on rides that you, don't, that you didn't put together. You, you get on, yeah, okay. I got on Space Mountain with my daughter one time. Man, I think that thing scarred me for the rest of my life, so that's why I can't forget it. I got on Space Mountain, Space Mountain with my daughter. We'd never been on Space Mountain. Decided we're going to get on Space Mountain. We go to get on the ride, and lo and behold, I'm thinking we're going to get in a car. We're going to be in, you know, we're going to be in the same car together in the same little compartment. No, we, they put us in separate compartments. Everybody had their own individual seat. You get in there, it's dark. You can't see nothing. And this ride takes, takes off. I had to, listen, let me tell y'all all the people I put my trust in. I had to trust, and Space Mountain was all, back then, it was always broken. But this day, it was, it was up and running, so we got on it. Think about it. I had to put my trust in the people who designed the ride, the people who service the ride, the people who operate the ride. I had to put my trust in all of these people on a risky ride, but I was willing to put my trust in that. Why? Because, you know, we think that this is going to be fun. We don't think about the, the peril that we're putting our life in, trusting somebody that we don't know. Well, when we get on the ride, I realize I'm too old to be on rides like this. So then I immediately had to put my trust back in God. I started singing songs. I told I, I was jumbling so many, um, so many inspirational songs together until it wasn't even funny because what, what happened was my fear kicked in. And my trust fled, fled, fled. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, my, my, my fear kicked in and my trust fled. And, and I said Wednesday night that fear is the opposite of faith. Whenever you start walking in fear, you stop operating in faith. And what happens to us? We get, on, we get into situations where we think that God cannot bring us out of that situation. And the first thing we do is we start to fear. Like, how am I going to make it? I don't know how I'm going to make it out. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Listen, your own testimony should be enough to help you to understand how faith operates. God brought you out of some stuff before you never thought you were going to get out of. So that same faith. Listen, what God was doing was God was building your faith so that you can operate in that same faith now that you're in this situation that you think you're in a situation that's so difficult that you don't know how you're going to get out of it. You may not know, but God already made a way for you out of no way. He already made a way out. Don't, don't we use that all the time? He's making a way out of no way. So I'm telling you right now, if you want, if you want a breakthrough, you're going to have to start breaking out. Come on, let me help you out. What do you mean by breaking out? You're going to have to start breaking out of your traditions. You're going to start breaking out of religion. You're going to have to start breaking out of your box. You're going to have to start breaking out of some things that you're going to start breaking out of your own mind that has you trapped and has you believing that the way that it is is the way that it is. That's not the way that it is. You're going to have to start breaking out. You're going to have to break out of always, you know, doing the same thing, getting the same results. And you're going to have to break out of some stuff. You're going to have to, you're going to have to break out. And, and if you want to break through, you're going to have to break out. If you want to break through, you're going to, you're going to, you're the one that needs to break out. It ain't up to everybody else. It, it is not up to them. Let, let me sip my tea here. It's not up to them. When I was in the military, we, I, this got drilled into me so much. And you know, when I, when, when I was in basic training, that the maximum effective range of an excuse is zero. It starts in you 
and it ends in you. It doesn't matter to anybody else. You didn't accomplish what you were assigned to accomplish. And the thing about God and the thing about what, uh, listen, the thing about God that, that you need to know is that God will never give you an assignment that you cannot complete. So if God gave you an assignment and you can't complete it, stop with the excuses. Well, not you can't complete it, but you don't complete it. Stop with the excuses because it was up to nobody else but you. This was your life depending on you doing what you needed to do. And you need to stop with the excuses about how hard it was. I know it was hard. It was hard for you. I know it was hard for you. It was hard for you in the beginning because what you didn't do is that you didn't put your trust in God. You didn't lean in. And so what happened was you took one step and then you started to fear. Oh, this look like it's going to be risky. It's going to be look like it's going to be this. You took one step. He directed your, he is directing your path. You only took one step and you gave up. You got to stop giving up on you and stop giving up on the promises that God has promised to you. Your life depends on you trusting God. Why would you not trust him? Why would you not lean into him? He is, you acknowledge that he is your savior. You acknowledge that he is your God. You acknowledge that you're walking with him. And once again, let me tell you, it ain't that you don't believe him. You believe him. You just don't trust him. You just don't trust him. If, they, if I put a rope on the ground and you walked across that rope and it held you, let's say it was three inches off the ground. You don't mind walking a, across a rope that's three inches across the ground. Why? Because there is no risk involved in that. If you fall, you really ain't nothing going to happen. What, what's, the, what's the very least that can happen? But what I'm trying to tell you is that the rope proves to you that it can hold you. But if I raise that rope some, now I'm raising the stakes. Because it ain't that you don't believe that the rope can hold you. Is that now you're afraid of falling. Because it ain't the strength of the rope that you that, that's got you. It is, it is the distance of the fall that has you. Come on, that was good, God. It ain't, it ain't the rope. It is the distance of the fall. You're no longer, listen, you, you, you believe that the rope can hold you, but you also know that if you fall, that it's going to be a greater fall. But watch this. Jesus is a true, a true foundation. A true foundation. If you're walking with the Lord, stop being so concerned about the fall. He will hold you up. Let, let me tell you like this. He got you. He got you. See, we raise, the higher we raise a rope, the higher we raise the stakes. But if you want to walk where ain't nobody else walking, then you're going to be walking in some red air. Oh, come on. That was good. That was good. If you want to walk, if you want to walk, because we, we want to be high and lifted up. If you want to be high no, no, I, I know we're supposed to lift Jesus. Jesus is supposed to be high and lifted up, but but you know, we want to walk with Jesus. You're gonna have to walk in some places where it, once again the rope is proving that it can hold you. Okay, I know, I know, okay, okay, good, good. I hear you, I hear you. Why you have to use a rope? Okay, let's use a board that's wide enough for you to walk on. Everything's cool. We can have it three inches off the ground. We cool, we cool. It's three inches off the ground. We cool. We cool. We'll walk on that all day long. But let's raise it up some. Let's raise it 20 feet off the ground. Now we got a problem. You know I'm afraid of heights. No, but the thing you're walking on can be trusted. It can be trusted. You proved it when it was three inches off the ground. Now what makes you think that it's 20 feet off the ground that that same thing can't hold you? Come on. When you're walking with the Lord, when you're talking about, I want to go to the next level, the next level takes you higher. You got to stop being afraid of being higher. It ain't that, listen, the same God who carried you when you were three inches off the ground is the same God that's going to carry you when you're 20 feet off the ground. Dude, listen, it ain't a matter of, is the foundation sure? It's a matter of, do you trust him? Because now you start looking around. Now you start thinking about, well, I got more to lose up here. Yeah, you also have more to gain up there. You see the world from a different perspective when you're higher up than it is when you're lower to the ground. Oh, Jesus. Don't, don't, don't life look different? from don't, don't the world look different when you're looking at it? Any of y'all ever flown? When you're looking at an airplane window, doesn't it look different than it does when you're walking on the ground? Uh, 
Problems look smaller from the airplane window than they do when you're standing next to them. That, that somebody's going to get that and somebody's going to be blessed by that. When God brings you up, when God takes you up, what, what, what you were walking with was down there on the ground. It, it looks smaller when you're walking with God. If, if you make God greater than your situation, if you magnify him far above your problems, far above your situations, your, your problems and your situations look smaller when you're walking with the Lord than they do when you're walking amongst your problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always look so much smaller when you're walking with God than they do when you're walking amongst your problems and your situations. So what you got to do is you got to learn how to trust God so that you're always walking with the Lord. Learn how to lean on the Lord and stop and trust in God and stop, instead of, you know, looking at your problems and making your problems bigger than they should be. Your God is bigger than any problem you're going to face today. He is bigger than any situation that you're going to go through. You need to be consistent and you need to be persistent in anything that you're doing. When I tell you that God is God, my God, my, my God will amaze you when you learn how to trust him and when you learn how to lean on him and lean into him and put some weight on this word. If God said it, God is able to perform it. Put some weight on the word of God. Stop being afraid. Stop, stop not trusting God with everything and start trusting God with every single thing that's going on in your life. And, and listen, it, this is going to seem like I'm shifting gears. I'm really not. What I want to know is who you trusting? God, who you trusting? Who you putting your confidence in? Who you trusting? What, what, what does your circle look like? Come on, I, I got I, I got a, I got a, I got a word for that. Go to Proverbs chapter number twenty, verse number eighteen. Proverbs twenty and eighteen. Come on, let's go there. I'm about to wind this up. Proverbs twenty and eighteen. Proverbs twenty and eighteen. Are you there? Ah, uh, every purpose is established by counsel, and with good advice, make war. <clears throat> Some of y'all, you got to get out of that me, myself, and I. Some of y'all, some of y'all giving yourself some bad advice. Did, did y'all catch that? Some of y'all giving yourself bad advice. Some of y'all, <laughs> instead of you going to do, like I told you, there, there ain't going to be no breakthrough if you don't break out. There, there'll be no breakthrough if you don't break out. Some of y'all will sit there and give yourself the worst advice that any person has ever heard. Your advice so bad, you won't even share it with nobody else. You just share it with yourself. You, you know when you sit there and you're in the midst of something, you keep on trying to tell yourself um, that, that, that you know that, that once again, here you go with yourself. Uh, it, it, it all stuff always happens like this. It always happens to me. This don't happen to nobody else. You giving yourself bad advice. You can't even walk in your purpose because you keep giving yourself bad advice. Stop giving yourself bad advice. You're giving you bad advice. Listen, if you want some better advice, go talk to somebody who got some better advice. Um, stop making war. You making war with yourself, giving yourself bad advice. Me, myself, and I. That, that's, that, that can't be your, your whole circle. That, that, can't be, that, can't be the per that, don't, that, that cannot be your advisors. Because if it is, you're never going to get anything more than what you already have. Did y'all... You're never going to get anything more than what you already have. You just need to be careful who you're building with. But you need somebody to help you build. Ah, uh, you Listen, if you ever built any, we built a house. There were brick masons. There was, there was the guy who did the framer, who, framer who was good at carpentry. Uh, that there was there there was somebody who poured the foundation. That there, there were there was somebody there was somebody who did the electrical work. There was somebody who did the plumbing. All of these people helped to make one house. Now, if we had said that we just gonna hire uh, a carpenter to do to do all of the work to do to do all the electrical work, the plumbing house probably would have been jacked up. Probably would have been jacked up. That's me, myself, and I. You trying to build a whole life. And you're not, you're not, you you you're not getting any counsel, and and your purpose in life is going to be established through counsel. You talking yourself into stuff and talking yourself out of stuff. You trying to make war without getting good counsel. 
Nobody goes to war with no. Well, let me rephrase that. Nobody with any sense will go to war without getting good counsel. And if you disregard the good counsel, your purposes are going to be thwarted. Your purposes are not going to come to pass. Why? Because you're making war without good counsel. What does good counsel do when I get ready to do something? Good counsel helps me to establish. Good counsel helps me to make better decisions. It helps me to make better decisions. Let, let me go on to, to, to this. Let, let me move on. Let me move on. So, so go to Amos 3 and 3. Go to Amos 3 and 3. Amos 3 and 3. Let's go there. Uh, if you, uh, you know we hardly ever go to Amos uh, Amos 3 and 3. Go to Amos 3 and 3. Go to Amos 3 and 3. Uh, any of y'all hang out with folk you don't like? Amos 3 and 3. Come on. You you really, if you don't like them, you don't hang out with them. Any of y'all got a job and you got people on your job you don't like? If you don't like them, guess what you don't do? You don't hang out with them. You do what you got to do and then you move on. But if everybody has identified everybody that you hang out with as being messy, I'm about to point at you. You messy. Okay, let me say it again. If everybody you hang out with is messy and you hang out with them, you messy too. Stop talking about you ain't messy. You messy too. If everybody you hang out with gossips, you're a gossiper. Stop talking about I, you know, I don't gossip. I, I just I just hang around with them to hear what they got to say. Because you take what they got to say and you share it. You gossip also. Uh, okay, so you don't believe me. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? This is not always a bad thing, but it's a bad thing if the people you're walking with are, are, are not what you say you want to be. Okay, so watch this. Can two have a good marriage except they be agreed? Can two have a good friendship except they be agreed? So that's a good instance of being in agreement. A bad instance of being in agreement is when you walking with folk that you say are contrary to everything you do and you want to be. If you walking with folk that are contrary to who and what you say you want to be, you're never going to be what you say, what you say who and what you want to be. You can't be, oh man, I'm giving away my sermon for Sunday. You can't be connected to the world and have the world feeding you and think you're different than the world. You're no different than the thing that's feeding you. You're no different than that. You can't be healthy and eating unhealthy food. You understand what I'm saying? If you put always put unhealthy food in your body, you're going to be unhealthy. Why? Because you are what you eat. You Come on. You are what you eat. Whatever it is that's feeding you, that's who you are. So stop saying, I'm, I, you know, you want to be different, but you're still connected to the same things that make you who you are. If you want to be different, you got to connect to some stuff that makes you different, to some things that make you different. You can't want to be godly and you disconnected from God. You can't know God apart from his word. If you're not spending any time with God and his word, you can't say that you're a godly person. You're not. You are who you're connected to. How can two walk together except they be agreed? If you're walking with the world, you agree with the world. You just need to be honest with you. That's who you agree with. Because if you didn't agree with them, you'll stop walking with them. You ever met it? You ever had people in your life that you just don't like no more? You don't hang with them anymore. Why? Because you don't agree with them anymore. So why is this any different than, 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 than us saying, listen, you can't, Holy Spirit will not lead you and guide you if you don't feed him. If you're not, if you're not giving him total control of your life, how is he going to lead you and guide you and you're not connected? So how can, uh, how can anything be feeding you in your life and you're not connected to it? Whatever you're connected to, that's what's feeding you. Listen, in that scripture where Jesus said that we got to stay connected to the vine. Listen, if you disconnect from the vine, the word of God in that same in that passage down a little bit further said you could do nothing without him. 
So how do you figure you're going to conquer everything that God has assigned to you and you're not connected? Come on, you cannot be disconnected. You can't be, if you're connected, oh Jesus, let, let me tell you like this right here. If, if you ever, if you ever find yourself, okay, okay, I'm going to use this example. Okay, calm me down, Lord. Let me use this example. If, if you are, if you, if you are connected to the world, listen to this and you go and listen to your favorite secular song. And right after that, I came back right, right after you finished listening to it. I said, come on, pray. We're going to pray, 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 press in. You, you know, what's going to happen. That secular song is going to be in your mind. Why? Cause you just connected to it. And if you don't disconnect from it, it will, it will influence the rest of your day. It will influence you. And at that moment when you should have been praying, you won't pray. Why? Because that song is in your mind. I could throw some of y'all off your game right now. Think about your song that you used to love back in the day. Start singing it to yourself. Everything that I'm telling you right now, you'll disregard. Why? Because that song has influenced you so much. Why did it influence you? I'm, I'm trying to give y'all a clue right now. Why did it influence you? Because you sung it over and over and over and over and over until it became a part of you. What happened with you in that song? It got in your heart. The seed of the, the words of that song got in your heart and they grew because you listened to it over and over and over and over and you never disconnected from that song. Think about this in life. If you, if you, if you hear faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, if you hear it over and over and over and over and over, it'll get down to your heart and it'll grow and it'll produce the thing that God said it would. If you connect it to the world, you keep hearing the world over and, and over and over and over and over until you produce what the word says. I mean, what the world says. So if the world is feeding you, you're going to produce what the world tells you that you're going to produce. And I'm telling you right now, you will never have breakthrough until you break out. You're never going to have a breakthrough until you break out. And some of y'all, you just one word away from a breakthrough. But you won't break out. You, you, won't, you won't disconnect from the things that keep you in a mess and connect with the one God that says that he'll bring you out. You won't, you won't disconnect from that stuff. And, and, and what happens to you? you you'll, get into, you'll get into a situation you'll be like, I know only God can bring me out of it. And what happens? You go and connect with the world. The world makes you feel good for the moment. You're not out of the thing because you haven't had breakthrough. You don't understand. You're still trapped. You're still trying to use your old methods to bring about different results. And your old methods will never do it. Think about this. A, a person that uses drugs, whenever they get in a tizzy, when life gets tight, what do they do? They go back to drugs. We look at them, we be like, oh, they just a drug addict. But, but I want you to think about this right here. Are you any different than them if you keep relying on your old methods? Come on, that, that, that's preaching right there. Are you any different than them? The, the only reason why we frown at them and look down upon them is because they're doing something that we say and it's toxic. But so are you. You're doing something that's toxic to you in your life. I, I'm not saying that you're in the same boat as them. I, not like that. I'm saying their decision making. I, that's all I'm, I'm talking about. The, the, the decision making process. I'm not talking about the result process or, or, or the manifestation of their decision process. I'm talking about the, the decision making process. You're using the same decision-making process that they're using. You're just using something else instead of the same the thing that they're using. You, you're not using drugs. You're using something else as a crutch. They're, they're, using, they're using the drugs as a crutch, and you're using whatever it is that you're using as your crutch. It may not be the drugs, but you're using something else. Your decision, I'm talking about the decision process is the same. They, they're trapped in theirs, and you're trapped in yours. You're, now, the manifestation is different, but the process is the same. They're doing stuff that's harming them, and you're doing stuff that's harming you. What I'm telling you now is you got to break out of the old decision-making process that has you trapped in doing what you've always been doing. Listen, you're not going to get anything different by doing the same thing that you've always been doing. If you cuss folks out on your last job and lost it, cuss them out on this job, you're going to lose this job too. If in your last marriage you did all of this stuff, do it in the same, do it in your next marriage, and your next marriage, you're gonna get the same results. And we keep looking at them 
And you're the only thing common in all these situations. You're the only thing common in all these situations. So if, if, if that's what's happening, I'm telling you, you need to examine your decision-making process. The word of God says it's like this, renew your mind. You need mind, mind renewal. You got to renew your mind. Once again, the same God that you walked on that board with at three inches off the ground or two inches off the ground, if he takes you 20 feet off the ground and you're still walking on that same board, you got to trust that same thing three inches off the ground. You need to trust the same thing 20 feet off the ground. He is the same God. He's consistent. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen, we believe God can do all of this stuff. The truth of the matter is, is that we just don't trust God to do it for us. And that's a problem. We believe that he can do it. We just don't trust him to do it for us. And that's the problem. And it ain't that God can't do it for us. We just don't trust him. We, we rejoice when he does it for somebody else. Somebody else gets something, we like, oh, praise God. Hallelujah, that was great. But when it comes to you, you're like, hmm, I, I don't know. And then guess what? You, you refer back to your old methods and you get back in your old process and you keep trying to work out what only God can work out in your life. And, and you got to stop doing that. You got to start trusting in the Lord because he can never direct your path or direct your steps if you're not trusting. So we got to start trusting. Amen. My time is up. Praise God for you. I'm telling you right now, you want to walk, walk in trust. Start trusting God. Stop getting all in the tizzy when things look like they ain't going the way that you think uh, that they should be going. Stop getting in the tizzy and just start trusting God. Start believing God. Start putting all your faith in God. Start putting weight on his word. What does it mean to put weight on his word? If he said it, do you have you, you need to start having the faith to believe that God's going to do it. And putting weight on God is meaning, okay, God, I'm walking in your word. I'm doing everything you told me to do. Now, God, you got to do everything that you said that you would do. That's putting weight on God's word. That's putting weight on God. That means I'm leaning in, God. And I'm trusting you, not direct me. Amen? I bet you're going to start seeing some God results. This, listen, we're in a time of manifestation. So whatever you speak, you're going to get it in a hurry. And I know some of y'all got some bad mouths. I'm telling you better God was coming out of your mouth. Listen, and the only way that God was coming out of your mouth is God was going in your heart. Because what's in your heart is what you're going to speak. And I'm telling you right now, in this year of manifestation, in this time of manifestation, what you've been, what you've been saying, you're going to get it immediately. So I'm telling some of y'all right now, don't be walking around today talking about you broke because you're going to be broke, broke for real. You better start speaking some positive things over your life. If you want whatever it is that you want, you're going to get it. Some of y'all so used to speaking bad and negatively over your life. I know this is going to be hard for you, but you better start. You better stop doing it. it manifestation is coming immediately. And uh, you don't want to be manifesting all that junk. You want to be manifesting only the word of God. Praise God. Y'all have a great Friday. Bless you.